Welcome back to our next series of videos. This is lesson four of the internet. I have my cup of coffee here. Uh, not a paid advertisement for Dunkin Donuts, but you can't talk about the internet without having coffee or some caffeinated drink. Uh, if you've never experienced the love that is Dunkin Donuts coffee, I, I feel sorry for you. Anyhow, we're going to get going here. Enough, uh, enough goofing around. And we're going to talk about the interwebs, the internet. The internet is kind of an interesting topic. The way the intro class and the BCIS class is typically organized according to one of the more popular curriculums is that we talk about the internet and then in the next series, which is series five, lesson five, we're going to take a look at telecommunications where we talk about networking and how signals move from one computer or device to another device. Not really, I think, the best way to do it, but I'm trying to stay parallel with your major curriculums out there. So we do have to talk a little bit, just a little bit, about basic networks so we can understand what the internet is. And we begin by taking a look at what is a network. The New Penguin Dictionary of Computing defines a network as any collection of entities connected together by some form of conduit to form a coherent group. More or less, what we're talking about here are devices connected together for the purpose of sharing resources. These resources can be anything. So we network again at the heart of a network. We network because we want more functionality. We want more out of our computers or devices than we can get if they were isolated on their own, not connected to anything. Again, resources can be anything really. It can be processing power, it can be storage, it can be applications, it can be data, it can be all sorts of different things. The hardware of a network, and we're really glossing over this. Again, if you have more interest in networking, I do have a video series that I'm putting together still. It's Network Plus, which is a um, mid-level geeky range certification that focuses on networking. You can go higher than that, let's say Cisco networking or Microsoft networking. But we do have to talk about some of the basics of networking here as well. Some of the basic hardware that we find in a network are things like cables or wireless. So for example, somehow you're watching these videos. Assuming you're watching these videos on YouTube and they haven't been ripped, um, if you're watching these videos on YouTube, then you have some sort of network connection. The back of your computer or you might be on a wireless device, somehow you're connected to an ISP. Somehow you're connected to an internet service provider. If you have cables, then it's a hardwired connection. It is typically unshielded twisted pair uh, cabling, UTP cabling. Uh, you might hear it be called Cat5, Cat6, or Cat something like that. Those are categories. It's not really the same thing. Longer explanation that we need to go into. But if you look at the back of your computer, you might have something known as a patch cable. Again, unshielded twisted pair cable, cat, whatever. The cable looks like a larger telephone cord. This is your networking cable. If you have a different kind of computer, for example, I'm on my Mac, I don't have a networking cable connected to the back of my Mac. In fact, the router, which we'll talk about in a second, is in another room broadcasting out wireless signals and my computer is able to connect to that wireless connection. Wireless has really taken off in the last few years, I would say. I still remember when you wanted to do a home networking, at least a home network, you would have to do the wiring and there's rules and protocols and things about doing the wiring. Now with wireless, which is amazing, you can do uh, so many devices connected to your wireless connection. Again, you've seen me pull out my cell phone more than one time. My phone's on the wireless network. My iPad's on the wireless network. I've got a printer right over there off camera, which is wireless. We've really seen an explosion of wireless devices. Also, if you have Bluetooth device, for example, that's also considered a wireless type of connection. So, for example, when I wake up my boys in the morning, I have and I, I use Amazon Music, and I have a playlist specifically for called "Wake the Boys Up," and I have different songs in there. So, yeah, I have the Frozen song, you know, "Let It Go," "Can't Get Out of Your Head," and some other songs. I really like Congo right now, and I have a speaker which is Bluetooth. And it's paired together, and so I'll put the speaker in the boys' room, hit the music, and I hear, but anyhow, today's the last day of school for them, so I digress. The other thing that your computer's going to need is something called a network interface card, affectionately known as a NIC. Now, don't call it a NIC card, 
because geeks will go crazy, uh, which you might want to call it a net card just to see geeks flip out. But a network interface card is how your computer or device connects to the network. It's that connection that will attach to the wire or will attach to the wireless device. You have hub switches and routers. Hub switches and routers are kind of in the same family, but they are different groupings. So they're, they kind of have the same purpose, which is to connect devices to a central location. Hubs are what we call dumb devices. A hub is something that just repeats information. In fact, you might also hear them called repeaters. These are older devices back in the early days of networking 10 years ago. We would have a lot of hubs connected in networks and what would happen is a signal would come in and the hub would go, I get a message for blah, 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 and just yell it out to everybody. A switch is a little smarter. A switch will send information based on something called a MAC address. Basically, a MAC address is like a social security number that's assigned to your network interface card. And so you'll have a message and in that message, in that packet of data is a two line it goes to so and so and i'll have a two a social security number in the computer world that's a mac address and the switch goes oh i know where this is supposed to go and sends it that way hubs and switches do not run the internet they are on smaller networks which we'll talk about in a second the next one is a very smart device a router a router is able to send information by a telephone number for example in the computer world, this telephone number is called an IP address. We'll look at that in a second. So let's say that I'm out here in Humble, Texas, which is northeast of Houston. And let's say uh, somebody connects to me on my Facebook page. And by the way, my Facebook page is right there. And you want uh, to say something. Let's say you have a question about something. Or you say, hey, great job, wonderful videos. Or you suck, you know, go die. Um, you, but you're in California. So the message from California has to get to me. Routers know how to do that. Routers are able to go, okay, you're calling this number over here in Texas, or let's say that I'm sending an information packet to somebody in Massachusetts. I've got cousins in Massachusetts. And so it's able to go, okay, I've dialed this extension, this phone number, it goes up there. So what you need to know as far as this goes is that hub switches and routers send information elsewhere. They connect networks together. Hubs and switches are for local networks, not the internet. Hubs are dumb. Ugh. Switches have a little intelligence. Routers are your smart devices. Routers run the internet. They're able to do the phone numbers that can send information to anywhere in the world. The next two concepts are clients and servers. If you go to a restaurant, you are a client. Let's say you go, we have a great Tex-Mex place out here. It's a mom and pop place called Manuel's. Love it. And I go to Manuel's and I go there with a the family and we sit down. We are the customers. We're the clients. A person comes over to us. This person would be the waiter or server. We tell the waiter, hey, we'd like some iced tea and we want some queso. Love queso, yellow queso. And uh, they go and get the queso for us and bring it back. Now, hopefully this will make you hungry. The purpose of this is to explain a client server. In the computer world, a client is a device requesting something. It's requesting a resource. So for example, on your computer right now, if you're watching YouTube, your computer said, I want this video or I have to watch this video for class. Who knows? But I want to watch this video. The server, in this case, it would be YouTube, goes, okay, we have requests from a client for this video. So here is your video. By the way, click on the ads because that's how YouTube makes us money. Um, but that would be the server. So client-server in a client-server relationship, your computer is requesting information from a, another computer that will then provide that resource, so client-server. In the next series of lessons, when we talk about the telecommunications, we're going to take a look at the classifications of networks a little bit more. Uh, we're going to talk about things like topography, uh, bus topology, ring topology, star topology. We're going to talk about peer-to-peer -peer relationships. We're not worried about that right now. Just be aware that there's ways to classify networks. The classification we're going to take a quick look at in this series is classification based on geography. 
we can classify computer networks based on how widespread they are. And we have wonderful terms such as a wide area network or WAN, a metropolitan area network or MAN, a campus area network, CAN, a local area network, LAN, and a personal area network. I want to take a look at the local area network and the wide area network. The local area network is what I'm running right now in my house. I have my Mac connected to my router. My router is connected to my printer. I am connected to my phone. I'm connected to my iPad. This is a local area network. Your home is a good example if you have a wireless connections of a local area network. Your place of employment, let's say that you work at a school or you go to school, that would be a good example in the classroom, but probably a local area network. Now, the school itself might be part of something called a, a CAN, a campus area network. We're not worried about that. But local area network is just that. It's a local network. So its components of the network are within a local region. The opposite, the other end of the spectrum on this one, would be the wide area network. The wide area network is just that. It's humongous. It is components of a network spread across large distances. Example of a WAN, the best example of the WAN, this is why we're talking about it, is the internet. We also have wide area networks that involve, let's say, military bases. So, for example, the U.S. has military bases uh, around the world. That would be part of a wide area network. They have their own separate kind of internet. I don't want to call it internet because it's not really internet. It's like an intranet. But they have their own kind of networking that can go across the world. You might get large corporations. Uh, for example, the Umbrella Company. If you don't know the reference on that one, look it up. Um, but you might have the Umbrella Company, right? Which has <laughs> networks all over the world. This would be a WAN. And this, by the way, cannot just be worldwide. Now, we are in space with our wide area network. In fact, we had the very first astronaut use Twitter from the space station. They didn't even relay it down to Earth first. It actually originated from the space station through the wide area network, the internet, back down to terra firma. So the WAN can be not just contained to our planet, it can be out there in space. Kind of exciting times, really. Okay, in the next video, we're going to take a look at some of the basics of the internet.